Okay, <clears throat> in this section we're going to talk about the special role that homogeneous solutions play in the general case even when you don't have a homogeneous system. Now this result is very interesting because it doesn't just apply to linear equations but when you take differential equations you'll see a very similar result and uh, it's a very widespread concept that applies to any so-called linear system, whether it's a system of equations or not. Well, let me let that comment go there, but suffice it to say that this theorem really is a particular case of a very general principle. All right, so let's see what it says. The statement, the theorem is called particular solution plus homogeneous solutions. Okay, and that kind of summarizes what it's about. So suppose that W is one particular solution to the linear system of equations LS, AB. That means, again, it's the set of X such that AX equals B. Right, so that's not necessarily a homogeneous system if B is not the zero vector. So we're taking one particular solution, one particular W, that satisfies this equation. That is AW equals B. All right. Then, Y is a solution to the same system if and only if Y can be written as W plus Z, where Z is some vector in the null space, in the null space of A. Now remember what this means, that Z is in the null space of A. That means that A times Z is equal to zero. So if and only if, what that means is that um, if we w want a solution to this, a uh, solution y to this system, and we know one solution already, then we can add any vector in the null space to that particular solution and get a solution to, to the system. On the other hand, if I uh, have a solution any particular solution to this system, and I add any vector in the null space, then it's still a solution. Okay? So there are two ways to show it. Two ways to show it. If I have a particular solution and add a vector in the null space, it's still a solution. On the other hand, if I have a solution and a particular solution, then that solution can be written as the particular solution plus a vector in the null space. You notice that, of course, you could write this as y minus w equals z, that's the same thing. Okay. So in other words, the difference between any two solutions of this system is a vector in the null space. All right, so, so let's go through the proof. These a1 through an are denote the columns of the coefficient matrix. Now we're proving this implication. What that means is that we're supposing that W is a, is a particular solution, and that Y is W plus a vector in the null space. Okay, so we're supposing that Y is a that W is a particular solution, and Y is W plus a vector in the null space. What we want to show is that Y is also a solution to A X equals B. Here, let me get us rid of some of this garbage so we can see what's going on. So just to just to reiterate this point, we're starting with this y equal w plus z. We know that w is a solution, so we know that aw is equal to b. We know that z is a in the null space, so we know that az equals zero. And we want to show <coughs> that y is a solution. So to show, what we really need to show is that ay is equal to b. I right, know this is a very careful step-by-step -step proof, and it's purely algebraic. Okay. So <coughs> suppose W is a solution. That means that the vector B can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A where the coefficients are the entries of W. Okay, we proved that in the last section. You can look up this theorem and see that's exactly what it says. Okay, now if that's true we can certainly add zero and the equation is still true. He's referring to properties of vectors. Now, 
we can substitute zero for this vector here because we know that z is in the null space of a. So that means that the linear combination of the columns of a with coefficients being the entries in c, that gives me the zero vector. Okay, so I can substitute this zero for this zero vector. Okay. At this point I can simply rearrange terms because I'm adding vectors. I'm going to use the commutative and associative properties. So notice this term here and this term here. I'm going to group those together. This term here and this term here. I'm going to group those together. These, ve these vectors are all added together so I can add them in any, any order. So I'm simply reordering the order of addition. Okay, so when I do that and I use the distributive property, I can write this same combination in, in the following way as the combination of the columns of A where each coefficient is has this form. It has a component of W plus component of Z. Now, I can combine these components together. Component of W plus component of Z is the corresponding component of W plus Z. Okay, that's the definition of the sum of two vectors. Now look, what we have here is a linear combination of the columns of A that gives us B. By definition, that means that this set of coefficients, W plus Z1, W plus Z2, etc., 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 is a solution of the system of equations A of AY equals B. So that's we get the finally we get the final result here. This is, so this this gives us a solution to the linear system, and we're we're done. Algebraically, we went through and showed that we can express uh, b in such a way that b it shows that b is a that y is a solution to the equation a y equals b. All right. So that was the only if we started with a with the fact that y is equal to w plus z and we show that y is a solution. Now we want to go the other way. We want to show the start with the fact that y is a solution and w is a solution and show that uh, uh, y is equal to w plus z for some vector z in the null space. Okay. This is also is a purely algebraic equation. We start suppose y is a solution. We also know we know that W is a solution. And we want to show what we want is that Y is equal to W plus Z, where Z is in the null space, which means that AZ is equal to zero. Okay. As I, as I mentioned here, this is equivalent to showing that uh, y minus z, well, sorry, y minus w rather, y minus w <clears throat> is equal to z, and that's actually how we're going to prove it. <clears throat> okay, so we start this way. We're going to show zero. We're, what we're actually going to show is that y minus w is in the null space. Okay. So we start with zero. We write that as b minus b, and we know that a w equals b. And we also know that ay equals b, so we can write b as uh, b as this combination of column vectors minus this other combination of column vectors, and we do similar combinations, knowing that we can rearrange sums of vectors and uh, use the distributive law to combine coefficients. Similar to the previous proof, we have this sum of column vectors. Then using the definition of vector sum, this difference of components is exactly the component of the difference vector. Okay. So what have we shown here? We've shown that y minus w, the vector y minus w, is a solution to a times y minus w equals 0. So what does that mean? That means that y is y minus w is in the null space. Okay? 
So y minus w is equal to z, where z is in the null space. We simply rewrite, and we have x is e y is equal to w plus z. All right, let's go back to a previous discussion. We had this theorem NMUS. Let's go back and see what that is. Here it says non-singular matrices and unique solutions. Okay. All right, so th we showed that if we have a matrix, it's non-singular if and only if the solution AX equals B has a unique solution for every choice. We didn't talk about the case of singular matrices. So now we're going to talk about the case of singular matrices. So let's go back. Oops, let's see if this works. Okay. So what about singular matrices? What can we say about the solution sets? Now, a singular matrix has a non-trivial null space. Okay, we showed that, that uh, this characteristic of singular matrices. Okay. Now, for a given vector of constants b, the system Ls of a, b could be inconsistent, which means there could be no solutions. But if there's at least one solution, then since there's a non-trivial null space, that means there must be multiple solutions, because I can take any solution and add a vector in the null space to get another solution. Okay. So we really have two cases here, with a singular coefficient matrix then either there's no solutions to AX equals B, or there's infinitely many solutions. You can't have a single solution. Okay, let's look at some examples. All right, in this case, in this system D, turns out you can look back and see that these three vectors were all solutions to the system of linear equations. Okay. Now, uh, according, to, according to the theorem that we just showed, suppose I call this vector w. Okay. Suppose I, instead of y1, I call that, I have this one play the role of w. That means that y2 must be equal to w plus a null space vector. y3 must be equal to w plus a null space vector. Now, we can verify this. That's really the same thing as saying, if I say that y2 is equal to w, well, I'll just call that y1 because it's the same thing, plus a vector in the null space, that's the same thing as saying that y2 minus y1 is equal to z. y2 minus y1 must be in the null space. And you can verify that. You can take 4 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 and verify with your archetype D that this is a solution to the null space. Similarly, if we can have y3 in the same way, we have y3 is equal to y1 plus, plus z, we'll call it z prime. That means that y3 minus y1 is equal to z prime. This must also be a vector in the null space, and we can verify that. And that's what he says here also, that if you take any two solutions and take the difference, you can find that this is also a solution to the homogeneous system, so it's in the null space. OK, so remember this idea that any solution to a system of linear equations can be written as a particular solution plus a solution uh, to, uh, in the null space. And if there's no null space, then the equation has a unique solution if it's consistent.